Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay, where prefabrication can save you time and a lot of headaches. Here we have a prefabricated asteroid bunker. Basically, this asteroid bunker is going to be placed inside of the asteroid, and then we're going to drill it out and build it. It comes equipped with a top blast door on a hinge, which is dictated by a sensor. So as soon as you go past the sensor, the blast door closes. It prevents a lot of different things from being able to enter this tunnel. As we mosey on down here, we come to your actual utility and functional level. We have two interior turrets watching our back at the top. A few screens here and there. A control command center. Of course, your medical bay. And for the most part, I think you have enough room if you wanted to add some decor to do so. This is your utility room. It is featuring a full refiner with yield, three speed modules, connected in to an assembler, two small nuclear power plants, a hydrogen generator, just in case you decide to go that route instead. There's an oxygen tank and a hydrogen tank. For the most part, it's pretty empty in here, so definitely room to grow. This thing is also a drone. So if you need to activate anything inside of here while you're going, you can. There are three connectors here, fully capable of hauling small drone ships or small ships for attacking, such as fighters. We also have two interior turrets at the top. And we have these airtight hangar doors that allows us to pressurize the entire base. Let me see if I can get this button to work here. Oh, it's number two. Beyond the airtight hangar doors are blast doors. This helps prevent anybody from just being able to walk in here and shoot down our airtight hangar doors. It doesn't really seal though, but it gives us a bit of defensive protection. They are all operated on hinges. You have two in the center and two on each side. Pretty simple. At the top, you can probably see the two Gatling turrets. And there's also an antenna where we can either send a signal in or detect anything around us. Overall, this thing is just really floating into space, and what we really need to do is set up a place where we can build it into this asteroid. For this, I think I'm just going to move the space pod over a bit, give us more room, and potentially face a better view. I don't want to really be facing the sun. Maybe we'll face Mars or something. That way, when you wake up in the morning, after a long, hard night of space engineering, you get that glimpse of red hue in the distance. That should be good. So, starting this out, you really just need enough materials to build one battery a few steel blocks, a projector, and maybe a control panel to access it. I want to make sure that this steel block is going to be fairly lined up where we'll have enough space to set the projector and still see the entire bunker as we're moving it. Sometimes it's difficult finding the just the right sweet spot I think that'll do. I'm just putting one block, then we'll just put the projector on top of it. Make sure that your projector is pointing the direction you want. There's a four square that should be on top, and two lines on one side should be facing the direction in which you want to actually project the blueprint. 
Then we put this little control panel here. And finally, a battery. For the most part, that is the basic setup. Now with this, we should be able to project this asteroid bunker somewhere in this list. I know I've seen it before. Oh, makes sense. It's in the A. And we'll be able to move it around until we find a pretty decent spot on the asteroid for it. Right now, it looks like we're kind of sideways here, a little wishy-washy. In order to straighten this out, you have a pitch, a yaw, and a roll option. I recommend simply messing with it a little bit to see which direction is best for it to move. First, I'm going to move this forward so it's within our viewing range, but not mixed up with the projector itself. And it looks like we're facing sideways, so we need to flip that and then probably rotate it another 90 degrees. That should flip it. It may take a few times just to get the hang of using this projector depending on how you were facing the object when you turned it into a blueprint. Let's try that one. Looks like we're completely upside down now. Well, that's definitely not going to work. Sometimes it is good to just move one movement at a time, either the pitch, yaw, or roll, so we can figure out which one is moving it where. Now we're back upright, so we just need to rotate it 90 degrees. I think this pitch should do it. We might put us there. Yep, and there it is. It's still floating off the space. We definitely need to fix the vertical, the forward, and possibly the horizontal to get this built into the asteroid itself. We don't really want that much hanging out or our defenses of using the asteroid isn't going to really help as much. Now we have it way forward, but at the right height, so we just need to move it horizontally. You can kind of see it in the background as I'm moving it. It might be a little bit difficult. But as mentioned before, I always double check before I say anything for certain. Because that looks like it pretty much disappeared on us. That may have been a little too far. One more time here. One more time. Alright, so we can see the top here for our escape tunnel. And, yeah, it just looks like... The front of it is barely coming out. We should be able to cut most of that away and have a pretty good surrounding still from the asteroid. So next thing you want to do is connect where your projector is just by running a few steel blocks down towards it and line it up with one of the steel blocks of the side of the bunker. I think I went too far forward. Once we have this lined up 
and interacting with the projector, we should see that specific block on the projector turn into a more of a solid block where we can weld it. I think that should do it. Yep. I don't need this block over here. But you can see where it kind of filled in. Now you can weld that block and start building the rest of the bunker. The rest of the blocks will turn that solid color as soon as that specific block is welded. I think that's about it. Now to actually build this bunker, I'm not doing anything by hand. Instead, I have a little bit of a trick up my sleeve and I'll be able to show you that in the next episode. Before we go though, let's add a couple of solar panels so that way while we're building, our battery doesn't die from the projector. Otherwise, we may have to start all over again and we wouldn't want that to happen. They're pretty simple. The projector isn't going to use that much power, but the battery will start draining down as soon as we build the bunker because it does have a lot of different lights within the bunker that are going to be connected. Well, that's about it. Thanks for watching, and I hope you leave your tips and tricks in the comment section. I appreciate it.